Hi, in this video we are going to discuss about how you will approach a question like modes of transport of oxygen during your theory exams. So this video will be useful for all students who are appearing for physiology exams. So this question is usually asked as a short essay of 8 marks. So just like in any other answer, you have to start with a brief introduction or a definition regarding how oxygen is transported. So we all know that the transport of oxygen occurs from the lungs to the tissues due to constant circulation of the blood. And how does this occur? It is the diffusion of oxygen in the direction of the concentration gradient. Having said that, you can write two or three sentences at this point. So uptake of oxygen. We know that the concentration of oxygen is more in the lungs. So the partial pressure of oxygen in the alveolar or in the lungs is around 104 millimeters of mercury. What about, the, uh, what about in the blood? In the arterial end of the pulmonary capillary, the partial pressure of oxygen is just 40. So you can see that there is a huge concentration gradient because of which the oxygen gets easily diffused from this higher partial pressure to the lower partial pressure. So the key player here is the concentration gradient of the oxygen. So now the oxygen from the lungs has reached the blood. Now it has to be transported in the blood. So what are the modes of transport of oxygen? It is basically transported in two forms. One is in combination with the hemoglobin and that is the majority. That means 98% is transported in combination with hemoglobin. And the rest 2% is in the physically dissolved form. So, combined with hemoglobin, hemoglobin binds with oxygen to form oxyhemoglobin. And it's a loose and a reversible combination. What's the significance of this? It's loose and reversible, so it can be released easily at the tissue level. Now, one molecule of oxygen combines with one ion of the heme molecule. So, how many ions does a heme molecule have? Here you can see that one molecule of hemoglobin contains four ion atoms. Right? And one ion can combine with one oxygen molecule. Which means, one hemoglobin can actually combine with four molecules of oxygen. Yes? So, each molecule of hemoglobin can combine with as many as four molecules of oxygen. Now, this reaction proceeds in four steps. So, when the first molecule of oxygen attaches at the binding site of the hemoglobin, the f this first step is really difficult. Why? Because at this time, the hemoglobin is a tense state. So, it will be difficult for the oxygen to attach to the iron atom because of this tense configuration. But then after that, when the second oxygen molecule, by the time the second oxygen molecule enters, all the salt bridges would have broken and the hemoglobin will be in a more relaxed state. So as oxygen molecules attach, the reaction will be more and more easier. Or in other words, the affinity of hemoglobin to oxygen increases. Okay. So initially, in the first step, the hemoglobin was in a tense state. Then in the further steps, there was rupture of the salt links. So, the hemoglobin becomes in a relaxed state. Now, this phenomenon is termed as cooperative binding kinetics. Cooperative binding kinetics. Now, this is the reason why our oxygen dissociation curve is sigma in shape. So, you can write all these steps in the answer. Next, moving on to the second major form, which is the dissolved form. I said that the dissolved only 2 percentage of hemoglobin is present in the dissolved form. Why is it so? That is because the solubility of oxygen in water of the plasma is very low. So, at partial pressure of 100, only 0.3 ml is in the dissolved form. Okay, And it obeys the Henry's law. What is the Henry's law? That amount dissolved is proportional to the partial pressure of oxygen. So, what happens if PO2 is more? That means more oxygen will be in the dissolved form. Okay, So, is there any clinical significance for this? The significance is that it can be used in hyperbaric oxygen therapy. So, hyper, hyperbaric means high pressure. So, when oxygen is under high pressure, what will happen? More oxygen will be in the dissolved form. So, 
this is useful when our hemoglobin is denatured so that this dissolved form will actually oxygenate the tissues and when this hemoglobin get denatured it gets denatured in certain types of poisoning like carbon monoxide poisoning okay now you have to draw a diagram of oxygen oxygen dissociation curve okay so in that you can on the x axis first uh, we can show the partial pressure of oxygen from 0 to 110 on the y axis you can mark the percentage of oxygen saturation of hemoglobin okay and then we can draw the hemoglobin dissociation curve showing the p50 and also marking the different phases okay and then you can also write some additional points like the oxygen carrying capacity of hemoglobin i said that one molecule of hemoglobin can bind to four molecules of oxygen So what about one gram of hemoglobin? One gram of hemoglobin binds with 1.34 mL of oxygen. What is the normal value of hemoglobin in our blood? Say if it is around 15 gram. So which means, in 50, if the hemoglobin level is 15 gram, in 100 mL of that blood, there will be around 20 mL of oxygen. Okay. So that is the oxygen carrying capacity. It is good if you can memorize these values because it is important for the exam. and you can also add on more points to the oxygen dissociation curve like the factors affecting it the causes of its shift to left or shift to right and what's the physiological significance so in a nutshell when you have to approach this question modes of transport of oxygen you should start with a brief introduction or definition you should write the different modes the two major one which is combined with hemoglobin and the dissolved form and the dot the diagram of the oxygen dissociation curve